Hello friends, we come to part 3 of chapter 5 class 11 psychology, the chapter on sensation, attention, perception. In the first two parts you have seen what are stimuli, different varieties and qualities of stimuli, what are the different sense organs and sense modalities present in a human being and you have also dealt with the eye and the ear in detail. In this part we shall cover the different attentional processes, selective attention, sustained attention, divided attention, span of attention and also the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. What is attention actually? It is a process through which certain stimuli are selected from a group of other stimuli. If you look at yourself at this point when you are sitting in a classroom, there are so many stimuli present around you. Your teacher is standing, you are listening to this video lesson, there are friends around you, maybe there is some itching in your body somewhere, but what are you focusing on? You are focusing on listening to this lecture. Why is it and how is it possible that amongst so many hundreds of thousands of stimuli that a human being experiences at a particular time, you are able to focus your attention to only one or a very selected few of the stimulus. This is because of the process of attention. There are certain properties of attention. They are selection, alertness, concentration and search. Let us see what these are. Selection. Now to select a particular stimulus amongst many others, there are certain properties that we follow in the process of attention. Alertness. It is the readiness to deal with the stimuli that appear before you. If you have an exam and you are already told about it, then you will be very alert in writing the exam rather than paying attention to the sounds and the noises that are coming from other classrooms in your school. On the contrary, if you are waiting for your best friend to come to your home, you will be very alert and ready to listen to the sound of his cycle bell or if you are waiting for your father to come, his scooter horn or the car horn is something that you will readily be able to attend to because you are paying attention to it in terms of alertness. Another property of attention is concentration. This means focusing awareness on certain specific objects while excluding others. When we have to concentrate on something in a game, in a game of uh, dart throwing, you concentrate only on the bullseye and ignore all the other things that are around you. Concentration makes you focus attention and look at a particular stimulus, negating all the other ones that are present around you. Next quality being search. Search is when an observer looks at a specified subset of objects amongst a set. If you have gone to school to fetch your younger brother or sister, there are so many students of the same height, even in the same school uniform coming out, but you shall be able to focus your attention only on your brother or sister, the specific object amongst all the other similar ones. So, with the help of alertness, concentration and search, we are able to selectively focus our attention on certain stimuli. Thus, Attention is an effort allocation process. It requires effort on the part of the observer or the human being to be made available to certain stimuli. It involves focus. This is awareness to a central or a particular object. When there are many fringe objects which are very vaguely existing but do not tend to make you aware of them. So, while paying attention, your focus is on a central object and there are many fringe or other vague things around you. Let us now come to the process oriented view of attention. It is divided into selective attention which is selection of a particular stimuli and sustained attention which is concentrated effort on a stimulus. Selective attention, it is the selection of a limited number of stimuli from a larger number of stimuli. We can receive and process 
only limited stimuli in terms of our limited capacities of sense organs. But which are these stimuli? What is the particular quality of a stimulus that makes us attend to it and not to the others which are present? The factors that affect this selective attention are external and internal. External factors like size, intensity or motion. Studies have shown that objects which are larger in size are noticed or attended to more readily. Objects which have more intensity or things that are moving constantly are paid more attention to as compared to the static things. Things which are new or moderately complex also attract us. Also, sudden things or rhythmic sounds or pictures which are human pictures catch our attention more than non-rhythmic sounds, pictures of animals or things which are constantly occurring around us. The internal factors are motivational and cognitive. Motivational factors being psychological and biological needs of human beings. For example, if you are very hungry, you are more likely to pay attention to even the slightest odor of food coming from the kitchen. However, if your stomach is full, certain smells will not affect you and you will not even notice them. Socially, if you want to achieve some grades in the school, you will be more focused in terms of attention to what your teacher is saying. However, if it is just a luxury or a normal class in which there is nothing related to the grades, the attention will be lesser paid. Attention is also affected by internal factors like cognitive abilities, interest, attitude, preparedness set of a human being. The process of selective attention is explained by some theories over the years by psychologists. Let's see them one by one. First one being the filter theory. It was propagated by Broadbent in 1956. This theory postulates that there are many stimuli simultaneously entering our reception. They create a bottleneck. They move through the short term memory to enter selective filters. These selective filters allow only one stimulus to move through the higher levels. The others are screened out and hence we become aware of only this one stimulus which moves to the higher levels of brain and are totally unaware of the other stimuli. How simple! Something that is allowed by the short time memory to move up the receptor levels is recognized and all the others remain out of our sphere of attention. But isn't it too simple to be accepted? Therefore, a second theory changed it a little bit and in 1962, by changing the filter theory, Pressman proposed filter attenuation theory. It is a modified filter theory. It says that the stimuli which were getting through the filters at a time and are not completely blocked, they are only weakened. So, if a certain stimulus reaches the higher levels, and others which are not able to reach the higher levels are still there and they might at some times penetrate through these receptors and be attended to. Some of these can escape the filters and manage to reach the higher processing levels. For example, the personally relevant stimulus. If there are certain stimuli which are very very relevant to your personality, even if they are not loud or intense enough, they will still be noticed by you. For example, if you are standing in a very rushy marketplace and there is a lot of sound around, a very faint voice calls your name. The voice was so faint that it would have been blocked by the memory and not allowed to reach the higher levels. But still, because it was your name and you associated yourself with it, you were able to detect it even within the noise systems. So this theory explains the process of selective attention in a better manner. Another theory is the multi-mode theory, which was given by Johnston and Hines in 1978. It says that attention is a flexible system. It allows selection of a stimulus at three stages. First being the sensory representation, which is constructed. Then is the construction of semantic representation, 
and then the sensory and the semantic representations enter the consciousness. This theory assumes that more processing requires more mental effort on part of a human being. So, if a stimulus passes through the first stage of sensory representation construction, then lesser effort is required. However, if it goes on to the third stage and then it is selectively attended to, then more mental effort is required. The second process of attention is sustained attention. It is the ability to maintain attention on an object or event for a longer duration. It is required in many professions like radar reading or air traffic management. Here, the people who are responsible for these jobs are required to pay attention to similar kind of stimuli for a very long period of time. This is also known as vigilance. The factors that affect sustained attention are sensory modalities. It is said that auditory stimuli are more attended to than the visual stimuli. The clarity of stimulus. Experiments have shown that intense and long lasting stimuli are more useful for sustained attention than meek, weak or stimuli that last for lesser durations. Temporal uncertainty and spatial uncertainty are other factors affecting sustained attention. Things that occur at regular intervals of time and things that occur at fixed places are attended to for a longer duration than things that come for very brief intervals or occur at random places. Friends, we see sometimes in our life a very unique phenomenon multitasking. We are able to do many things at one time. Sometimes walking on the road, you come across drivers in a car who are talking on a phone, though it is not a nice thing to do. Also listening to music at a time, talking on their, you know, SMSing on their cell phones. They are also at times talking to a co-passenger and also driving. Needless to say, the maximum attention is being paid to the process of driving and lesser to talking and music and other such activities. But still, it is happening. And this is a very, very automatic process. It happens with tasks which have been practiced for a longer duration of time. So when you have practiced sums in maths, you can solve addition or subtraction while listening to music or talking to your friend. However, when you were very new to addition or subtraction when you were in class KG or class 1, you needed complete attention to do them. So this makes us realize there is a phenomenon called divided attention, which occurs as an automatic processing phenomenon with processes which have been highly practiced. The unique characteristics of divided attention are that it occurs without intention. It takes place unconsciously and it involves very little thought process. Of course, if you are simultaneously trying to do things, all of which require your thought processes, you will not be able to do any of them. One thinking and one physical activity simultaneously can go on in a process of divided attention. Another very important thing is span of attention. It is the number of objects that one can attend to at a brief exposure. This is also known as the perceptual span. That means the amount of information that an observer can grasp from a complex array of stimuli at a single momentary exposure is the span of attention. Span of attention is measured using a very complex instrument known as the tetestoscope. There have been many experiments which have been conducted and a psychologist called Miller has given a magic number. He says that the span of attention of human beings is 7 plus minus 2. That means at one time, you can instantly remember 5 to 9 numbers in very rare cases and not more than that. However, if someone is a genius, then the situations might be different. A tetrastoscope is an instrument in which there is a small window on which a paper is placed containing certain numbers or alphabets. It is shown to the person for a brief period of time and then the next card is given. So these experiments tell you the magic number of 7 plus minus 2. 
have you noticed that card numbers are usually four in digits and then there are four alphabets why is it so precisely because if there is a car breaking the traffic rules or speeding highly a traffic policeman at, at a quick glance can easily remember this number longer numbers after exposure are not contained in your span of attention now we understand the process of attention and different types of attentions like divided attention continuous attention that we pay to things and even the span of attention then why is it that sometimes we are not able to attend to things sometimes we are not able to concentrate well friends nothing to worry it is because of momentary things like fatigue or at times physiological or physical reasons in your environment but something which you need to worry about is a disorder related to attention adhd attention deficit hyperactivity disorder it is usually found in primary school going children and is more prevalent amongst boys than girls as the name suggests children suffering from this disorder are unable to pay attention to a stimulus for a longer duration of time the characteristics of this disorder are impulsivity excessive motor activity and inability to attend to stimuli the cases and the reasons are not biological there have not been biological reasons that could be found for this disorder however dietary reasons have been found especially the absence of color in your food therefore it is very very necessary to include all the colors in your food you must have fruits and vegetables of different colors like green yellow red there are also psychosociological reasons which have been found to result into adhd now what is the problem if there is adhd children who suffer from adhd are having disability in sustaining attention therefore they are not able to learn even simple subjects in school they are not able to follow instructions they are unable to get along with their peers thus they get a negative name and they get labeled as children who are not learning properly despite the fact that there is no intelligence deficit in them so what is the cure for this disease there is a drug called ritalin but it is not a very good medicine to take because it has been found to have side effects like slowed mental and physical growth in the children in the absence of good medicines for adhd something which comes to a rescue is the behavioral therapy behavioral therapy is like sensitization giving rewards for doing certain activities and also verbal cues which are given by the subject to himself have been found to help children in this a lot of educational psychologists deal with children having attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and are able to cure them using behavioral therapies so psychology comes to rescue when you have to cure attention disorders and also many other disorders which you will learn in subsequent chapters friends in this part we dealt with attention its meaning and its properties we also saw different classifications given to attention theories explaining them and also the factors that affect attention also we were able to look at the practical implications of paying attention and why certain stimuli attract more attention than certain other stimuli but to be able to make sense of a stimulus when another very important part is perception after studying sensation and attention we shall deal with perception in the next part that is part 4 of chapter 5 till then pay attention to all that you learn thank you Thank you.